Hey friend, hey, so let's talk. You came to this video because you want to know how to make extracts for your business or for your personal usage. I got all the answers for you on this video, okay? So on this video, we're going to be making an oil-based extract and a water and glycerin-based extract, AKA a glycerite. So if that sounds like something that you're interested in, keep watching. I got you, I got all the deets, I got all the tea. You're gonna learn everything today. Thinking about actually like, I know it's so off topic, but I'm thinking about selling extracts on my, just for my business in general, because I make so many and I have an abundance of herbs and botanicals and all the good stuff. So I'm thinking about that. Like, let, let me know what you think in the comments below. So the reason I make my own extracts is simply because I know exactly, I like to have full creative ability of all my products. So I like to manufacture and craft everything from scratch. It's just, it's just easier for me that way. Because I have all of these herbs and botanicals, why not make my own extracts versus, you know, going to buy some. And I just like using my own ingredients for all the products that I use. So I know exactly what's going into it. I know exactly what everything is. Um, I make sure that there are no unnecessary, you know, ingredients inside of there. Just nothing extra that I would have to put on like my labels and stuff like a preservative that I already use here in my products. And then a preservative that another manufacturer uses is, it's, it's gonna be, I feel like it's too much to add and just a too too much of a hassle to me personally. I think it is. The glare on my glasses is driving me crazy, but I can't take it off because I'm blind. As far as extracts go, sometimes extracts are used for colorants. Sometimes they're used for their benefits. Sometimes they're used for both. Because I don't use any artificial colorings inside of any of my products, I don't feel that is necessary. Me personally, that's just my opinion. Um, I don't feel like it's necessary in my products to have any artificial colorings. I could use plant-based colorings. I feel like it makes it that much more unique and different. And also the colorings aren't just for like, you know, pretty colors, they have benefits in it. So for like a blue color, you could use butterfly pea, which is a type of flower that's really good for collagen boosting, anti-inflammatory properties. It's a really pretty blue color and if you add like something acidic to it like citric acid it turns purple is really dope sometimes they're used for colorants sometimes they're used for benefits sometimes they're used for both in my case it's used for both because i do want my products to look pretty and be aesthetically pleasing but i also want them to be beneficial to your skin and not just a colorant you know what i mean also i am not a doctor I'm not a registered anything. I manufacture skincare and I research everything. So bottom line, do your own research. Everything that you make and do is your choice. Do your research. That's, I did mine, do your research too. I'm here to show you and, and you know give you my take on everything, but also do your own research, okay? Okay. If you extract a certain herb in a water-based extract versus a, an oil-based extract, sometimes the colors aren't going to be the same. So if you make a green tea extract out of oil, you might get green, brownish green. If you do it in an extract, a glycerin extract of water, you get a brown color. So that's why I said always do your research because it might not come out the way you want it to come out always do your research okay before you make full batches of stuff you'll also need gloves and two sanitized heat safe jars i'm using sunflower oil for my carrier oil so i'm just going to put it in a jar and i didn't really need to measure it because it's for my own personal use but if you are selling it or putting it in your products, you need to measure it because you'll have to measure your preservative to go with it after, oh, you see how I spilled that? After it cools down. So I filled it just a little past the calendula petals. 
After this step, you can put it aside because we will be putting it in a hot water bath. All right, now on to the next jar. You'll add the calendula and add your water. A good rule of thumb is 40% water to 60% glycerin. Even though I'm measuring now, I do remeasure after I strain a calendula, it literally drinks up a whole bunch of water. So to get a more accurate read on my measurements, I do remeasure it and the final results gets the correct amount of preservative. Um, anything with water does need a preservative. Anything with water can grow bacteria. So now I'm putting both of them in a hot water bath. Don't make fun of the rag. I learned the hard way that if you put the glass in the pot, without anything on the bottom, it could possibly break. I learned the hard way so you don't have to. Now that you have your double boiler, you're going to let your water come to a low simmer on low heat for three to four hours. All right, we are back after three, three and a half hours and I am now straining the mixture. All right, so I did let it cool for a while before actually pouring it and now you see me adding my preservative into it. All right, so now it's on to straining my oil infusion. I'm not adding a preservative to this oil because I'll be using it for my own personal use. But if I were putting it in a product that I'm selling, I would definitely add a preservative. All right, so that's just about it. I went ahead and transferred everything into the bottle that it's supposed to be in. Um, the bottle on the top with all the herbs in it is my actual scalp oil that I'm using for my own personal use. So thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you guys thought. Any questions? Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Okay, bye!